Hey cats and kittens, Ed Bud here, and today I've got another episode of my famous series, The Big Three. Well, it's famous amongst people who like running shoes anyway. Here I'm going to pair off three shoes against each other, all of their different facets, features, functions, you name it, it's going to be in there. This is going to be a big episode today. The Reebok Run Fast 3 versus the Fuel Cell Rebel 2 versus the Liberate Nitro. Foray into faster pace footwear for fun savvy future purposes. So three big shoes today, high on pace, low on price. Let's examine with eagle eyes the Run Fast Dry, Fuel Cell Rebellious 2 and the Puma Liberator with nitrogen. Quick stats for the eyes and ears to ensure there's no tears if you're spending those hard earned earth credits, baby. There'll be numbers on the screen now displaying various different things that'll be very interesting to all of you. They'll be over just over here somewhere. Hope you're enjoying those. So you will notice there the Run Fast 3 is the heaviest of the bunch. I've chosen three shoes today that are all in a specific kind of use case, for me at least. This one's about 253 grams. We go down to the Rebel 2, we're down to 224 grams for the Puma Liberate Nitro. It's just bizarre. It just weighs almost nothing. It is quite astounding. That Rebel 2 is an 11 and a half UK, US size 12. I have noted that in other videos, guys, if you are gonna get the Rebel 2, be careful on sizing. Beast and I would be most appreciative if you think about subscribing to the channel. It really does help us out. And click that notification bell as well for when we launch the new videos. It also really helps out in terms of the YouTube algorithm to get us out to more people. If you give this video a thumbs up like and share this video with your running buddies. Danke schön. All three of these shoes are about the same width in terms of that four foot area. So I think a lot of this is gonna be down to the upper feel that you prefer as to which one is the best for you. Reebok certainly is the thickest of the bunch here. It's quite a coarse sort of plasticky material. It does feel a little bit like a shopping bag. Maybe one you'd pick up at Lidl's or Aldi. I think that does account for the additional weight here in the Reebok. And the profile around the heel is something I just struggle to get on with in this variation of the shoe. It's very low. It does feel like my heel's just gonna sort of fall out of the shoe. Struggling with lockdown on this one, gotta be honest, guys. Though I guess if you have any Achilles issues and rubbing and things like that, the Run Fast 3 could actually do a good job for you. I had to change out the stock laces in these because the originals were like cheese wire. I couldn't get a reasonable lockdown. These are actually the ones from my SL20s. So all round, I just feel they've taken a step backwards in terms of upper with this one from the version two. A mono mesh in the Liberate Nitro from Puma. And it is Puma, not Puma. Over here in the UK, we pronounce it Puma. I think you guys over in America pronounce it slightly differently. And that's fine, because you know we're all different and there are certain things about us that make us different and those things are great. So let's champion those things rather than all try and be the same, hey? Yes, it is a little shower curtain-like in terms of upper, but I don't really notice the synthetic nature on foot. It's a really nice fit. Top-notch lace length here, Puma. You got it spot on. I don't know if somebody's been measuring or something. I hope they have. It's probably just some sort of coincidence. They just landed on it purely by luck but there's no unnecessary flapping around of the laces once tied up i found the fit on this one really great it is a little more roomy than the other two shoes in today's comparison i had no issues dying in a good lockdown no heel slippage yeah just a really great fit sort of slipper like again very minimal in terms of upper on the rebel 2 this one provides really good containment but i have to say i'm having to opt for a thinner sock when utilizing the shoe mainly due to that length it does run a little short compared to the others in today's video i think for upper though for me the liberate nitro takes it with three points two points for the rebel 2 and in last place one point for the run fast 3 let's hope they change it for next year midsoles now so we have a p-back space material here in the run fast 3 although you're not going to get the same type of feel as you would from zumax or from the endorphin line. It's caged like a wild and hungry beast. 
with this EVA section on the top. So your foot's actually on top of a much firmer layer. I kind of wish I could feel what it was like if those things were reversed. I think it feels okay at lower speeds, but of course, today we're looking at faster tempos. And it's good for that, although I wouldn't suggest I'd want to use it for anything much above that. Kind of a steady or a tempo type shoe for me. Perhaps one for those people that are looking for a more responsive kind of ground feel underneath. A firmer ride. The Liberate Nitro is unsullied by the introduction of any plates or wedges in the midsole. A very Turbo 2 like feel about this one. And I feel there's kind of lots of spring and rebound from the midsole material. You don't feel so much like you're sinking into it more that you're sort of hovering on top. Imagine Marty McFly on a hoverboard with marshmallows. I'm finding it great at a real range of paces, in fact, anywhere from sort of easier recoveries right up through to my 5K pace. I mean, at intervals, it just felt fantastic. Really, really nice. I'd love to try it on a track, actually. Very stable shoe, too. I didn't feel unstable on turns or corners. It just does it all. No hot spots, either. The Rebel again feels great through the gears and there's little to dislike really or there's little I can find that I would improve in the midsole. I would suggest that the Rebel perhaps feels more prominent underfoot than the Liberate Nitro, especially with that side fin. I guess that might make it a little more usable perhaps if you're less than a neutral foot striker. Also there is more midsole foam in the Rebel 2 than either of the other two shoes. Certainly as well the most compressive of all three in today's comparison. In terms of midsole, the Rebel 2 seems a very stable, performance-orientated option which can handle a real range of runs and sessions. Thus, I'm going to give the Rebel 2 the three points for midsole, two for the Liberate Nitro from Puma, and one for the Run Fast 3. I just feel it's probably the least versatile of all three shoes in terms of midsole. Outsoles have really moved on, haven't they, in 2021. We've got some really great stuff in terms of outsoles, hitting the shelves and the roads. Puma Grip across all of their models is proving very durable and very light thus far with just small measly coatings providing some great grip. There's some bite there without weighing down the Liberate Nitro too much. The Rebel 2 has some great grip, although I am finding it's wearing down quite quickly. Those protrusions aren't quite as piercing as they were. I think I would have preferred the more rocky-like daggers of the RC Elite, perhaps, on the outsole of the Rebel 2. A bit like a rubberized Iron Maiden, those things. The Run Fast 3, though, gives a good account of itself. I gave it a good pounding yesterday and got rid of all the dirt. Quite impressive, that. Just by running, it removed all of the dirt. I have noticed there's quite a hard piece in the outer edge of the shoe here. Never noticed that before. Carbon rubber, multi-directional friends here to aid you in your activities. And there's no wear at all. So far, at least anyway. We'll soon see about that. So quite a tough call on outsole, although I found the Puma Grip actually seems to work a little bit better in wet conditions. And on gravel as well, it's particularly enjoyable. I do urge you to try that out. It does feel really nice on gravel. In fact, I, I might have to just go and wear it outside on the gravel now, just to satisfy my hunger. So I'm gonna give three points for the Puma Liberate Nitro in terms of outsole. And I can't split these two, so I'm gonna give them 1.5 each. Value now. Value wise at 90 Earth credits, the Puma Liberate Nitro is the cheapest of the bunch. And despite some recent brand hater comments, in fact, recently my videos have been getting out to more people, I've found there's more and more negative comments. People that can't even be bothered to use capital letters. What's that all about, eh? I think this makes for quite a super shoe though, in terms of the value. I managed to pick it up for 75 pounds, although I think it retails about 90. Still, it's ridiculous value. I think for those people that are mocking or suspicious in terms of Puma shoes, you just have two words to say to them, and that is Usain Bolt. You remember that guy, right? Puma aren't a fly-by-night band of wannabes. You know, they've been doing it for a long time. The Run Fast 3 retails at a higher price of 110 Earth credits. And then we leap up again with the Rebel 2, which is 125 Earth credits. After the miles so far in the shoes, I've got to say Liberate Nitro comes out easily on top in terms of value. I really do believe this shoe's going to hold up very well in terms of the midsole material. I mean, it's light as a feather. You could buy this, train in it, and use it for racing. Race some 5Ks, 10Ks in it, no problem at all. I think if you want a bit more stability underfoot, then shell out a little extra cash. You could utilize the Rebel 2 
up to a half marathon. Some viewers have said they use the Rebel for a full marathon. This one presents some great value. And it's, it's still really light. I mean, this is about as light as the next percent in my size. So there you go. More ground response and a firmer ride here in the Run Fast 3. Still makes for a good tempo shoe, but I just don't feel it's got the versatility of the other two. I do remember running a 14 mile effort last year in the Run Fast 2, which has the same midsole and outsole, and I didn't want to go too much further than that in that shoe. You can certainly race and train in both of these. So I think that makes some pretty good value. Three points for value for the Liberate Nitro from Puma. Two points for value for the Rebel 2. And one point for value for the Run Fast 3 in this comparison video today. So that gives us 4.5 overall for the Run Fast 3. 8.5 for the Rebel 2. And a super score of 11 for the Liberate Nitro from Puma. So a really great shoe from an all-round perspective for me. Remember these are my honest opinions. I've purchased all of these shoes with my own cash. I've got no axes to grind. In fact, I don't even own an axe. Or such equipment to grind it with. But in fairness, there's very little in it between the Rebel 2 and the Liberate Nitro. I think you can't go wrong with either. Just make sure you get the sizing right on the Rebel 2. I think all three of these offer something at the prices that they're selling for. Very reasonable prices. Especially when you consider the price of some of the super shoes that you can pre-order. What's that all about? Let me know what you think of the big three today down in the comments. Musical interlude today from Dr. Feelgood, Down by the Jutty, the collector's edition. I find she does it right, really does work if you want to go at some nice hefty tempos. It's got this almost marching kind of angular style that I really enjoy. The choppy guitars, the simple yet effective drums and vocal delivery of a man who sounds like he's on the edge. Which, you know, put it this way, I sometimes feel like that when I'm running at threshold pace. That's where you should be, right? You should be on the edge. Dr. Feelgood's version of Get Your Kicks on Route 66 as well is also a personal favourite of mine. I can remember seeing Dr. Feelgood, uh, I think it must have been a TV show or something, when I was quite small and it had quite an effect on me. I remember the uh, almost robotic-like movements of their guitar player. Yeah, Wilco Johnson, what a legend. I think some of their performances on South End Pier, I think it is as well, or at least the pavilion sort of thing there, are oh, legendary stuff, really worth checking out. Go and explore some music from Dr. Feelgood, guys. I think it will make you feel good. Okay, time for me to rock and roll out here and have some coffee, eat some more cookies, because that's what I do. Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me to the very end, guys. Please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos. And it also helps us too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.